All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with the Learn Dota 2 Spring League matchup between We Kinda Suck and Fornigmas Ver and Morello. We're going to see them playing this out today. This is a best of two. We're playing two games today between these two fellows, and this is a Thursday, so it's not a Tuesday, so unfortunately we don't have all the twos there. But we do have two heroes picked up for both teams. Of course, I'm Pythian, going to be bringing this match to you off of Dota TV as well as twitch.tv slash Pythian So you can probably pick this match up on either of those things. Because, you know what, if you're hearing this, you're probably already there. Gonna hop right into this matchup here. We've got Beastmaster and Vengeful Spirit for Four Nigmas plus Morel, and a Phoenix and Tidehunter for We Kinda Suck. So we'll see if We Kinda Suck they uh, hold true to that, or if they can actually come out on top of this one. A couple of bans out from the teams already. Of course, those bans come before the pick, so it's really not not too big of a deal. Of course, the Phoenix picked up. It does knock a lot of trees down, and I'm not sure if custom games and lobby games count towards cutting all the trees down, but you know what? If it does, you may as well contribute to that community goal that is going on right now. I believe it's 40 billion trees, or 20 billion? Let's say 40. That's a lot of trees, and it's it's going to be pretty hard to, to knock them all down. Phoenix can knock them down with a couple of its skills, and the Beastmaster also has those whirling axes. So that is pretty good at knocking down the trees. Although for some reason I really don't think that that goal is really necessarily why the the teams have gone for that. So some more bands coming out here. The Draw Ranger from We Kinda Suck. So they really want to be careful of this uh, Aura Strat from Four Enigmas. They've already picked up the Beastmaster as well as the Vengeful Spirit. And they do have a couple of Auras that would make this Draw Strat and Aura Strat a, a pretty formidable force. <clears throat> so they show a little bit of foresight and they knock that out right there. We'll see what they decide to go for with their, with their next ban. It could be a Luna if they're really trying to just ban out all the Auras. Although Luna hasn't really been one of the, the best carries to go for in this meta so far. I mean, it can work. And pretty much in any game in, in this league, you might see a couple of strats that just end up working, even though you might not see them in, in a lot of pro matches. Instead, they decide to ban out the Orsa, which... If you're not careful, it can definitely screw your team over. So we won't be seeing Fuzzy Wuzzy this match. A little bit disappointing for me. I have, I am a quite avid Orsa player, so a little bit sad to see him go. But with that band, we are going to move into the uh, third set of picks here for the teams. So it's kind of funny, whenever things get posted on Reddit, um, Valve tends to respond kind of quickly in some cases. So like recently, they there was a post on Reddit saying that the battle pass, it needs to come out sometime because, you know, the prize pool, it's not really, it's not going to go up that much if, if they don't release it sometime. And it's also kind of close to the Manila Major, which, which is going to be happening, I believe, at the beginning of June. So yeah, it, it's definitely time to get that, that battle pass out. And, well, they pretty much released it the same day that, that that comment went up. Or a Twitch post, or Reddit post, sorry. So I guess that's the way to get things done. Just have a very highly upvoted post on Reddit about something that really needs to happen. And Valve might listen. However, I doubt that Valve is going to be watching this match at all. As we have a Ricky picked up for, for Nygmas really not uh, here you see too often a lot of people have asked Arteezy how to build Ricky because it, it's kind of confusing with the the skills that he has he was recently reworked and I think he's fairly good he was played a little bit as a support in the last at the beginning of the of 6.87 but he's also a fairly good carry so we'll see what role they decide to put the Ricky in and, you know, if 
if he's able to be viable against this fairly tanky lineup. I would think that he might be okay against the, the Phoenix. I'm not really sure about the rest of the team. I think Ricky is a fairly early impact hero, though, so that might help him out against the Medusa. In addition to the Ricky, which is probably going to be a safe lane hero, I would say, they also go for the Dragon Knight. So I would say that this is going to be a very early impact dire side. They've got the Dragon Knight. You can just knock those towers down pretty quickly with that corrosive uh, breath on the ultimate, the uh, Elder Dragon form. And the, the poison does quite a bit of work to the towers, and it will continue to do that throughout the game. So if you can just get a little bit of sustained time on the tower, I mean, that thing is going to go down pretty quickly. So we're kind of seeing the way this draft is working out now for We Kind of Suck. I believe it's going to be a support Phoenix, a Tidehunter going to the off lane, Medusa in the mid lane, and Slark in the safe lane. Of course, it could be a little bit different from that, but that from what I see right now, and knowing not a whole lot about the teams... I'm kind of thinking that's the way it's going to go. Five seconds. This will bring us to the last set of bands for the teams. Looks like we kind of suck need a support, so I'm thinking that for Enigmas might go for something like that. Something gets good early. Uh, Lion was already banned out early, so you don't really have to worry about that anymore. But, you know, we could see a Witch Doctor banned out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right as I say it, the Witch Doctor gets banned out. It's no possibility of stream snipping right there. But, you know, it does feel good to be right every once in a while. And I think I think we kind of suck. They also may want to ban out a support unless they believe the Ricky is going to be in the support role. So it's an interesting choice they have right there. I'm thinking, you know, a Jakiro might be a worthwhile ban here because you do have that really fast push and the Jakiro is only going to help augment that. I don't, and if they're going for a support, I don't really see a need to ban out like a, a support that scales or anything because for Nygmas, they really just want to have their impact early. So something like a, a Jakiro or a, I don't think they would need to ban this, but a Pugna might be a worthwhile ban, especially with all the, the spells that the the Radiant would be using, even though they're not the highest mana cost. That is also something that they could ban out. They're, they're taking a pretty long time, and they're just going to ban out the Phantom Lancer. That's something that I didn't really see for Nygma's taking. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a carry Ricky, but they ban it out anyway because they don't want uh, someone going against that Medusa that can hurt her quite a bit. So they ban off the Phantom Lancer, take his mana burn out of the equation, and then we'll see what they decide to pick up with their last pick. Not a whole lot of time left in reserve for them, so we're going to get the, fic the pick fairly early. Uh, as for a support, there's something that's good at clearing out waves. Um, you know, a Dazzle might be possible. Synergizes a little bit with the Slark. Other than that, I'm not really sure. It'll, it'll also keep the Phoenix alive. They're going to go with the Broodmother. Okay, that's interesting. So it's going to be a support Phoenix and Tidehunter for We Kind of Suck, and they, they're just going to put the Broodmother in the off lane. We'll see how that matchup goes. They definitely have ways of doing with her, especially if the Beastmaster is able to get a fast six. If the Dragon Knight rotates over, you can get a Dragon Tail onto the Broodmother. They do need detection, but I think that the brood mother could get dealt with a little bit and if we also look at the wave queer for the dire side they have the dragon knight breathe fire as well as the beast master and ricky can also put the smoke cloud down and stop the the broodlings from well they he can give them a mischance that's also something that can happen there We'll just have to see how it works out, though. I'm pretty excited to see how this draft goes. It's It seems to be very greedy on both sides. Like, a Tidehunter and a Phoenix support combo, there's only a Ravage for stuns there. And if we look at the stuns on the rest of We Kind of Suck, I mean, it's kind of sparse. I mean, the Slark has a Pounce, the Medusa has Stone Gaze, but there are no hard stuns other than the, the Tidehunter, Ravage, and the Phoenix um, end of the Supernova. They are going to go for the Bristleback, so 
This will probably be a support Ricky and for Enigmas. They're going to go for some early aggression and then just try to survive with the Bristleback and Dragon Knight. They're going to be very tanky. And we'll see how this support Ricky ends up turning out for them. With that being said, we are going to go right into the disconnects. And beautiful, my, my binds are working. So it's good to know that um, the binds that were just put in with the recent patch to the game with the battle pass. So you can you can bind a number key to each hero, zero through nine, and it'll it'll jump to that hero when you uh, double press it. So that's a very nice tool to be able to use. It also works without assist camera, although most of the time you're probably going to be using with that. So definitely a good thing to be using here, but. Who really cares about controlling a camera when we could be talking about some Dota? So our heroes are all here, and we're just waiting for the go from the teams. Interesting that they go with the Broodmother pickup for the Radiant side. Um, you know, the Broodmother is a good hero, and it's not really... N it's good at taking like good trades I guess against this dire side so the dire side they're gonna be looking for some early towers gonna be trying to put a lot of pressure on the map and the broodmother really all she can do is just you know just push her lane and try to take other things in return so with that being said we're gonna go right into this match we've got four we kinda suck copeless on the broodmother it's a mango mother we've got the medusa the nice set being played by Tyree We've got a Tide Hunter, played by Gref, a Slark, Slarky Moraki, played by Paul, and finally, it's going to be the um, Kirstas on the Phoenix. Now here for the Dire side, we've got Beastmaster, played by Def. It's going to be a Banshee Vengeful Spirit, Ricky, handled by Lost. Down. We've got the mid lane Dragon Knight, also is going to be handled by Locke. And finally, the Bristleback, I guess this is going to be Carry, played by Capitard. So we'll see how this, this goes for the teams. We've got the Radiant at the bottom rune spot, pretty, pretty well scouted with the Mango Mother on the high ground. And I guess this is going to be a support Mango Mother. That's pretty interesting there. And it's going to be a Tidehunter in the bottom lane. Beastmaster comes in with the boar. is going to slow down some heroes. And the first last hit of the game. Well, not the first last hit. As Phoenix had already gotten one. But Broodmother is going to take one for the team. We'll see how this goes, though. Ricky has gone for a couple of uh, damage items. Mm, I believe it's going to be the Bristleback going for the last hits here. This is very weird. Support Broodmother. I'm assuming that she knows how to play it. And once she gets the levels up, it, she should be completely fine. But this is just very strange. She's definitely been, like, able to, to like, put the webs here in the most efficient way possible. But... Oh man, we'll see how effective this is. She's taking a lot of damage from this, and she just does have three tangos left. It's very strange. We'll keep an eye on that and see how it goes. Uh, in terms of matchups, it's going to be a tri lane top versus the Tide Hunter. Vegetal Spirit and Ricky going for the smoke screen first and Respects just gonna be happy to put some bristles down there, so it is going to be the bristleback taking the last hits in the in the top lane, not the Ricky. Medusa takes a lot of damage from the Dragon Knight Breathe Fire. Just have to be careful in that mid lane, although she definitely does have the Mystic Snake later to to be able to do some harass to the Dragon Knight. I don't think he's gonna to be too worried about it though. And then in the bot lane, it's going to be a Beastmaster versus a Tri Lane pseudo Tri Lane for the Radiant. It's gonna be the Slark the phoenix and a brood mother this is kind of weird so we talked about how the radiant really don't have any stuns and that could definitely be a problem in this match i mean they they're up against a ricky for pete's sake and as well as a bristleback so they're pretty much just going to have to do damage straight to his face or back or whatever is facing them because they really have no way 
of just being able to to get around him. Battle's gonna get delivered to the Dragon Knight on the mid lane, but the early farm lead so far is going the way with Slark with ten, and he's followed closely behind by the Bristleback. So I would say these these guys are fairly even right now. And yeah. Pretty quiet start to the game. I wouldn't really expect too much coming out because the Tidehunter very tanky at top. And there's really no kill potential at bottom unless the, the Beastmaster like misplays or something. But he's really got no way to go onto these heroes. And they don't have too many ways of killing him. I mean, he's tanky enough that he really doesn't have to worry about the Slark jumping on him at all. Yeah, it's going to be a very slow start for the teams cuz I'm not you're not scared about this Ricky at all. He's going to put the smoke screen down, but this is this is a tide hunter that really doesn't have to worry about it at all. And Medusa hasn't can't really work with the mana shield too much early, especially with the Dragon Knight breathe fire. So like she doesn't have a lot of damage. She's only got 58. She does have two of those fairy fires, but she's really just working this lane for levels and this Dragon Knight definitely has the advantage early. I mean, he's actually even with last hits, but if he works well with the Breathe Fire, there's really nothing this Medusa can do. And, I mean, he he should be absolutely dominating this lane. I mean, he's got the, the auto attack advantage. Oh, first blood on the bottom lane. The Phoenix gets the Beastmaster. We talked about how that has no po kill potential unless someone makes a mistake. And that was a leech hitting onto the Beastmaster and... The uh, solar ray doing quite a bit of damage. This uh, going in thing, like the camera zooming in when I'm not doing it, is really annoying actually. Let me see if I can figure out how to fix that. Alright, I guess I cannot fix that. Oh well. It's actually really annoying when it happens. So like, I go... Out. Oh, my uh... So my mini-map is just... Sorry, my camera is just screwed up right now. I thought I fixed my settings. But you know what happens when Dota 2 shuts down? It loses your settings for some reason. And just look at the, the Mystic Snake damage. So... This is what you really have to be careful of as a Dragon Knight. Like, this Medusa can just spam that out. Now she's got the Mana Shield. She doesn't have to worry about the Breathe Fire Harass. This is this is where the lane really starts to just go off for the Medusa. And the Ricky's made his way over to that mid lane, but he's not really able to do that much. Let me see if I can just fix my camera then. Alright, that should be fixed then. Fins off. Okay, so Sark has gotten very low on the bottom lane. He's actually down to 200 health. And he's almost at his level 6, a little bit higher than the Beastmaster. And that's of course helped by the fact that the the Sark did get a kill for the first blood. Copeless actually doing very well in the jungle. So he's gotten the, the smiters up, hasn't gone for any levels into the uh, passive. It's a little bit surprising. I would kind of expect a jungle broodmother to to want to go for that. Just to I guess you don't really need that though if you have the spiders tanking it up. So this broodmother's done extremely well. 49 last hits and just trucking through this jungle. And now look at this. Copeless has made his way onto the bottom lane. He's got the broodmother, all the spiders. Just gonna be able to go right in on this tower. And Beastmaster, he's got axes up in five seconds, but they're that's basically all he can do here. I mean, he's got the roar. Uh, Sark puts the star pack down, slightly misses the leap, 
He's going to put a little bit of damage on the Beastmaster, who is just trying to run away from those Fire Spirits. Not going to do much help, though. And the Ricky's here, too. And there's a Dark Pact. Oh, he's going to get the Roar, but look at this Ricky. He's so low. He's actually right next to the Phoenix, and Phoenix just clips him with that Zora, right? And that's going to be a double kill on the bottom lane as Slark. He just finds the last hit there, and Ricky goes down to the, the bottom lane only to feed. We kind of suck. They used this early aggression from the Broodmother, and well, Ford and Enigmas, they were supposed to be winning this early game, but it turns out that it's going to be we kind of suck with the advantage. Oh, Ravage is going to get used on the top lane. He's being very aggressive. Magic Missile comes out on the Tidehunter, and this Tidehunter goes down. Bristleback very low, but he doesn't really care at all. He's going to use up all of his mana and probably get back to base. Okay, so we got that happening. And once more, Broodmother goes into the jungle. So we talked about the early game. We kind of suck doing a lot of damage here. And Slark is just hanging out in this bottom lane. He's trying to get his farm up. He does take quite a while to, to just get going here. But he's had a pretty good early game. And all this tower gold from the, the towers, I guess... It's going to help him out with that. Ricky is going to be stalking through the Radiant Jungle. Maybe he could have been a little bit more aggressive onto the Broodmother. And he is going to block that medium camp there. Broodmother doesn't really mind a whole lot though. She's just going to keep going in, into the jungle. And they're probably going to get the Orchid Malevolence here. Interesting. I think there might be better items for this this Radiant Broodmother to go for because there aren't a whole lot of heroes on the, the Dara side that really require that item to like to go against them. Yeah, I don't really see the, the need for that. Gush goes on to the Bristleback. Not a whole lot going on there and they are going to put down the Sentry Ward. Here comes the Phoenix. Can it get the Fire Spirit onto the Vengeful Spirit? And the Tidehunter Ravage up in 35 seconds. Phoenix is going to get stunned here. Has the Supernova available. Going to use the Sunray. And has enough mana for it. But that health is going down. She will have to be careful. And there's going to be a swap underneath the tower. Supernova available is going to get used. And the Gush. Oh, Tidehunter really needed the Gush there. Vengeful Spirit just going to sit right outside of that Radiance. Uh, that uh, Radius, rather. Of the Supernova. Almost as if she were taunting definitely need to use the gush and here's the gush going on the vengeful spirit this vengeful spirit most likely going to die all the fire spirits getting used and yes. phoenix is going to get the kill there on a killing spree very early and take a look at this dire jungle belongs to them no longer it's going to be the radiant side and well ricky's also going to find the slark inside the the dire secret shop dire's top tower is under attack and this tower at top going to be not I mean, I would think that the towers would fall very quickly for the, the dire side because there is a broodmother against them. And the broodmother is basically running through the jungle right now. That's really all she's doing. I would like to see a little bit more aggression because I don't think that at this point there's a whole lot that the dire side can do. Bristleback stays at top. Don't... I don't really see him as too big of a threat right now. I mean, the Warpath can do a bit of an unexpected amount of damage to the Radiant side, but it's not really something that you have to worry about a whole lot. And I think that they know that this brood... Look at all these Spiderlings. This is... This is kind of ridiculous. Ricky's going to scout this out. He's going to be a, there for a little bit of these spiders dying, and there's going to be another one put down. So they, this brood mother has to be careful a little bit. Uh, oh no, but she gets the surround on the Vengeful Spear. Vengeful Spear trying to get out, and it's not going to happen. Went for a magic missile, but it was way too late, and now this Ricky. He's running away from the sun, but you cannot outrun that sun. And there's a double kill for Copa. So this jungle broodmother ended up being ridiculously powerful, and we'll see if that continues to the green. Broodmother, one of those heroes that tends to just kind of fall off. 
as you get towards the late game, but here's Beastmaster, and he is in the wrong place. Oh, there's a Ravage, and here goes the Beastmaster, and they could keep going on the Bristle Black, Bristle Black taking a lot of damage from the Solar Ray, and it's just going to be a little bit more damage needed. Here comes the, the Icarus Dive from the Phoenix, and that's going to be a dominating streak, and this Tier 1 Tower in the top lane quickly going to fall. They're just creating so much space for this Medusa, and the, the Dragon Knight, he's not rotated off the lane at all. He, he just lets the Tier 1 Tower top get taken. He's got no mana. And he's just stepping up against this Medusa. It's ridiculous. Uh, Kokos once again goes in the jungle, almost has that Orchid completed. And while well, Sark is going to find the Ricky in the bottom lane. Doesn't really matter though, the Dire will clean him up. Sark a little bit too aggressive there, especially for how early in the game it is. And he's at 2,000 gold. I would think that he lost a little bit. For, for that dive. And probably should have spent his gold before he died. Dyer's top tower is under attack. You might want to look into that. With that being said, though, we're going to go into the mid lane. We've got Tidehunter trying to decide what to do. He is fairly low on mana. The, the Sunray is going to do quite a bit of damage to the creeps. The Fortify is going to get used. And the TP comes in by the Dragon Knight. We'll see if he's able to do anything here. And the Radiant may have been repelled, but something you got to be careful of. This brood mama, brood mother, she's just sitting in the jungle right now. Not really sure what she's doing. Just waiting for the Iron Town to come off the cooldown. They do scout her out with the the hawk, and we'll, we'll see what's happening here. Here comes the brood mother, just waiting here. The yell is going to get used up the and this the smoke screen is going to be there to stop the phoenix from going into the ultimate. Now here comes the stone gaze in from the backside. A lot of damage. Ricky's going to get cleaned up in this. Vengeful Spirit was turned it into a stone. See if they're able to do enough damage to the Beastmaster. No, not going to happen, even though the silence is there. Now the Bristleback, he's forced to go away from this, but they don't really want to stay here any longer. And the Dragon Knight, he cleans up the Tidehunter. He was just getting blocked in by the Broodmother. Not Broodmother. Going to go onto the board, taking that off. But there's nothing they can do here. I mean, they don't have any detection. And basically, this Broodmother is free to do whatever she wants. And be as annoying as she wants. She can really do anything. Quick look at the fight recap and Fort Nygmas, they definitely took the advantage there, taking out both the Phoenix and the Tidehunter. Good Ricky there to uh, be able to make sure that the smoke screen got the Phoenix away from doing that ultimate. Because if that had happened, the, the fight could have turned out a lot worse for the Dire side. Yep, this game is very interesting. We've got 11 kills to 5, 15 minutes into the game. Ricky's going to be stealthing around here. We could have Broodmother putting a little bit of damage onto the Bristleback in the top lane. Bristleback's just going to back up. And Broodmother trying to figure out what to do. She's basically running around in circles right now. Literally doing nothing. Waiting for her, I don't know, Iron Town. That seems to be all she's doing this match, just waiting for her Iron Town. I'm not really sure what's going on. Tidehunter gets stunned up in the mid lane. He's gonna get sounds by the smoke screen. And here comes the Stone Gaze. Gonna slow down all the dire heroes, and they are gonna keep walking forward. They still have that Ravage available. Just really not sure what to do here. Look at all these Sentry Wards in the mid lane. Tidehunter, he could smack down that dire Sentry Ward, but he decides not to. Dire's bottom tower is under attack. And yeah, they're trying to figure out like where exactly who the advantage goes to. Ventral Spirit gets taken out at the top rune spot. Tier 1 tower, Ricky puts down a smoke screen, They're gonna, he's going to get hit with an anchor smash, here comes a dragon, Harry is just standing right in the middle of that smoke screen, here comes a dragon knight, dragon knight going to, uh, he's going to meet the phoenix, and here comes the supernova, there's the ravage that they were looking for, fair four man into it, 
and the Vengeful Spirit makes her way only to get stunned. Dragon Knight also going to get stunned. The yellow is going to go on the Copus. Copus taking a lot of damage from the Magic Missile, and here comes the Sun Ray. Run away from the Lazor and the Phoenix. He's going to go right in. Oh, it gets swapped in by the, the Vengeful Spirit. Almost going down, but not quite, not quite, not enough. And now here comes the Axes, just not taking down the Phoenix. Oh, Tidehunter, he's going to blink forward. He doesn't have enough mana. He's going to get the Gush. And the Beastmaster is very low. Weep gets hit on the Vengeful Spirit. And Tidehunter not down just yet. Yeah, they could take this tower down as well. Although there is going to be a leap onto the Bristleback. Here comes the Sunray, healing up the start quite a bit from these, these uh, Bristle hits. And the Bristleback almost goes down. The Spiders will help taking down that tier 2 tower. Only one tower remaining for a weak kind of suck to take out. Yeah, if there's no one watching, I'll just do camera, I guess. I don't really care. This camera is pissing me off. Top tower is under siege. Dyer's top tower is being Great team on I'll take that. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. It's probably Damn nothing to worry tested. about.
Ata. This is the hardest part of being an impartial announcer. Balancing how little I care about anything that's happening in the top tower is under siege. Dyer's bottom tower is being attacked. Maybe in the top tower is being attacked. Thank you. 